Um, so the next panel is going to be discussing how Bitcoin is uh, changing payment systems. I'm going to do my best to pronounce this name correct. The panel is going to be hosted by Tochi Onia. How'd I do? What's that? Okay. Um, and you'll introduce your panel. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. All right. Um, it's good to be here. Um, so quickly, without wasting so much time, I'm going to um, invite um, all the panelists to come up. So um, the first is Rai Stelling. Please put a round of applause for him as he um, get up here. Bernard Para. And the, the last person to join the panel, this panel session is uh, Rockstar Dev. Dev, please. So um, quickly, um, let's introduce ourselves, you know, tell us what you do, who you are, what you do, and the, any other interesting thing that you are involved in. Excellent. So I'm Rai Sterling. I work BD at Ibex first. I want to say it's an honor to be on stage with these legends. Um, I uh, work mainly in business development, and we are an LSP, so a lightning service provider, focused mainly on the global south. So our roots are from Guatemala. El Salvador and LATAM, um, and in the last year we have switched our, or not switched our focus, but grown our focus to uh, the Global South over here in Africa as well. Put your hands together for that. <laughs> yeah, over to you, Bernard. Yeah, my name is um, Bernard. Uh, I don't know the correct pronunciation of my name because people pronounce my name in so many different ways, so there's the French one, I think. Um, I run a company called um, Bidnob. Um, we do a lot of things, but um, the common thing among everything that we do is uh, we build a lot of um, payment um, services, um, leveraging Bitcoin uh, and the Lightning uh, Network. So I'm excited to be here. Applause for Bernard, yeah. <laughs> and me, myself, I go by Rockstar. I'm a developer in Bitcoin ecosystem. Even more than developer, um, all I do is uh, try to support Bitcoin in different ways through coding payment systems. Most of the people know me for my work on BTC Pay Server, where um, I worked on a solution that's non-custodial and really allows anyone to be their payment processor. I've spent four years at Strike, first as VP of Engineering, then head of Bitcoin, where it's a custodial solution. You all have probably heard of Strike. Strike is one of the supporters of this conference. So again, um, anything uh, where my code and personal effort can help Bitcoin to you know, get to the point where we build a financial system on top of Bitcoin, like that's what I'm interested on, about. That's what I'm working on. Awesome, a round of applause for that. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. So to get right into the question, um, Africa has a significant number of unbanked and underbanked population. Uh, so how unique and friendly are Bitcoin-based payment solutions such that would allow the easy onboarding of this um, unbanked and underbanked population in Africa? So I'll go first on that one. Um, at Ibex, we're more of a B2B infrastructure company, so we're not dealing directly with the unbanked. Um, but there are many solutions out there uh, that allow people to onboard to both Bitcoin, Lightning, uh, very quickly without the need for all the AML, KYC um, that is needed in a lot of the parts of the world. So I'm going to hand that off to these guys that are doing more of the boots to, on the ground for the unbanked. Is this working? Okay. Um, it's, it's interesting, it's um, unique, right? Um, when you look at Africa, so it's uh, over 40 currencies or something? 44 currencies, um, a lot of central banks. And the common problem is, you know, there's some of these currencies are exotic currencies, right? So we're talking about um, how, how is, you, is it for you to move from, say, the Nigerian era to, you know, the Malawian Kwacha, 
right? Um, there's not a lot of trade moving between those two countries, uh, and that's largely um, because of um, trade barriers, and one of them, one of the uh, issues is payments. Uh, one of the other things, of course, it's how, how do we make payments seamless between um, Africa and the rest of the world, right? So um, you, have, you also have this, this uh, you have this situation where the systems can't talk to uh, one another, um, where we're still dependent on a lot of um, what we call correspondent banking. So if you wanted to do, you have to have a US account or something, and then it's difficult. How do you convert your NERA to um, USD in order to move all of that? So what, we, what exists today hampers a lot of trade uh, between, um, between countries, right? Um, what, what's unique about Bitcoin, it's, um, it's, it's I, I, I say it's like a glue, right? <laughs> Is this thing that just came out and allows um, you know, somebody from Nigeria to talk to somebody from the U.S., right? Just exchange money, um, just the same way we can have, you know, calls over the internet, right? That's what has been missing, but I think today uh, we have the glue, and it's something that uh, already exists, right? People are able to do all of those things um, today, send globally, Lightning. Uh, recently we had um, Omar from Lightsburg and all of those things, Lightning and Rest. So it's, it's still early, but now, we have we have this thing that allows us to let's 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 just get the work done. Awesome, beautiful. Yeah, when it comes to me, I really depend on people who live in that whatever it's like a region, a country, locals to tell me how to best support their efforts. Um, I personally am mostly focused just on how to empower really any individual, regardless of their location in the world, how to build the technology that the individual can use to really defend their sovereignty and that they get to use the technology that I code to really expand their individual freedom. So that, that's always my approach, regardless of whether, again, I'm working for an open source project like BTC Pay Server, or work for a company like Strike. In the end, to me, it all boils down to empowering the individual, because I myself grew up in a country that was on a sanctions list, cut off from the world and uh, global financial system, and yeah, that's not the situation that you want really for anyone. Um, all of us depend on the connections with other people, other individuals, and it's through those relationships that we, you know, really improve ourselves and get ourselves to environment that, you know, we want to be in, situation we want to be in. And money as a specific type of information is one of the best tools to structure your relationships with other people, with companies. And this is where corruption that we see in fiat money is impacting all of us. Uh, and Bitcoin is really fixing this in a sense that just if, if you live in US nowadays, you live in the best financial system and you're a beneficiary of U.S. exporting inflation. You know, that's the biggest <laughs> export of U.S. But that, that's just not fair situation. And again, I want us to get to the situation where each individual in this world, regardless of their location, has the technology to, you know, defend their individual freedom. And then again, Bitcoin, Building financial infrastructure on top of Bitcoin is a means to get to that end. Awesome. A round of applause for that, please. Um, so the next question says, what innovative strategies are emerging to integrate Bitcoin into mainstream payment systems? And what measures are being taken to ensure that Bitcoin-based payment systems are accessible to a wide range of users and diverse African communities. Um, you want to go first? Rockstead. Uh, yeah, sure. Right. I want to hear you first. <laughs> OK, that's OK. So let's yeah. start with All you. Right. Well, I would start with, you know, Bitcoin is the innovative strategy or, you know, the innovation that we're working on. And, and now we're working on the strategy of implementation. 
Um, and everyone in this room, everyone that comes to the conference, we're all part of that innovation in each sector of Bitcoin that we're working on. It's not specific to just payments, it's the mining, it's the developers, it's everyone. And then to, I think, um, FA's point yesterday, it's you know, both UX and education, but on the UX side, we need to have easy, um, accessible APIs for people to plug in uh, into their applications, into their banks, into their exchanges, and all those things um, in an easy and simple way um, for this to spread quickly. Interesting, interesting. Uh, yeah, I think um, it's, uh, so it, it's in two ways for me, right? Um, it's, it's a system that already works, right? It works, so um, in that regard, um, if we're saying it works today, then um, it's a question of um, how much um, education are we, are we doing, right? Um, how, how, how patient are we to get people um, onto this network? Um, the other thing is um, how much are we willing to listen to them? Because I think um, one of the problems is um, it's like there's this bubble, right? So it's like there's this sort of group thing um, that things are, have to be this way. But um, you know, there's, there's, there's more than a billion people. Uh, you know, there are billions of people um, around the world, and they're going to use this in different ways, right? And that's why I keep saying that um, uh, Bitcoin is a tool, right? People are going to use it in so many different ways. So um, if Rai is you know, speaking to people in LATAM, um, you know, on the ground, they probably have ways that they want to use this um, because they probably see it differently, right? If, um, if I go to somewhere in Rwanda, the, the problems are probably not um, the same as, you know, somebody, um, you know, in Latam. So they want to use. So I think the, the main thing is um, it's, it's listening to, to those people and just tailoring the solutions to um, what they have. Um, I do not have all of the answers. I think the people, um, regardless of you know how poor the regions are or whatever, they have they have all of the answers. So we we have to go in with a lot of um, curiosity and everything. Um, I, I keep saying we have to think of ourselves of ourselves as uh, as missionaries, right? So uh, we probably won't be around to see these you know being used all over the world, but um, we we have the hard tasks of you know going in and doing it one person um, at a time. Uh, what, are, what are some innovative um, strategies to um, sort of prevent you know, abuse and all of those things? I think there are, there are no answers to them as well right now. Again, it's let's, let's, beat, let's beat the answers. Let, let's put things into action and beat the answers out of, out of those things. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean... To me, again, it's all about give the technology to people. That's, that's what it is. And again, my work is always about that. Even I actually brought an example, and you're going to love this. I can take it out of my pocket. And um, it's a device that's used as a point of sale. But I don't know, probably some of you saw on my Twitter account, it's also money printer because you can print your own money with this that's backed by sats that's backed by bitcoin see so bernard here you go 10000 sats <laughs> the No, and uh, we need to print money with your face on it, Bernard. How about that? Do you want that? Um, uh, no, 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 no. no? I can't be a Jesus. I can't be a Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to become a target. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. what we can definitely do is, again, provide technology for people to use and uh, participate in financial system that Bitcoin is. Because really, I think we're getting it to the point where it's not only comparable to a traditional financial system that you have in U.S., like it's, it's even better, it's cooler. And this is where, I mean, I'll keep, no, no, listen, oh, you, you want, you have it, get it. Yes, see, because, you know why, Bernard? Because you already withdraw all the sats. Yes, 
But here we go. I have a new one with laser eyes. And uh, I don't know, you probably won't see when it comes out with uh, its paid. But uh, here we go, a new card. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, it's really getting the technology to the point where everyone can use it and then distribute that technology so people can you know, use it in their business, in their daily life, and uh, not need to go to a trusted third party that has all kinds of, you know, KYC, AML, whatever policies, you know, we just don't serve your country. But rather, you know, you want a point of sale, you want a money printer, you have all the technology. Like, so yeah. Build it, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. A round of applause for that. <laughs> yeah, you're like surprised by all the demos, but okay, I'm putting the machine off. Yeah. Okay, so right on to the next question. Um, mm -mm. What collaborative strategies would you suggest have the potential to impact the payment infrastructure across various African countries? Collaborative strategies. Yeah, so collaboration is, um, you know, better than competition, right? Um, it's, uh, so, so, so the one thing I always say is this is, this is still a small industry. Uh, it's very innocent. Um, you know, as Ojama said earlier, it was, you know, just 470-something uh, companies looking at themselves as um, Bitcoin companies. Um, I think but when we take a step back and think of it as a tool, then we now have hundreds of thousands of companies who can be become Bitcoin companies. So um, how, how do we talk to these people? You know, to say, hey, what's, what's your problem? This is how Bitcoin can solve it. We don't need you to believe in Bitcoin. You know, they just want to have their problems solved. Um, and then we have to be honest ourselves, right? Um, if there's something else that works better than Bitcoin for that company, then they don't need uh, Bitcoin, right? So again, the same way you would go to the grassroots to listen to people is the same approach that we have to take with these people. So payment companies, um, you know, asset managers, all of these other people. But I think the payment companies are probably like um, our biggest friends in this case, if we can convince them uh, and show them that there is something, but the hard work is in building and proving it. So, show, sure, don't tell. I mean, when it, when it comes to me um, as as an outsider and someone that, that you know look looks at it from outside, my perception is that it seems there are so many technologies that can be applied here. But again, it all really, from my perspective, depends on what is it that individuals that are here want to do and, and like what's the biggest chance that they see and I again as an outsider come in as a support because Bernard and me for example like Bernard is a, such a great entrepreneur and yeah if if he was in US like his net worth would be 10 times more 100 times more and the only difference is the location like I have experienced that and went through that as I immigrated to U.S. And it's not only Bernard, so many other people that I meet, like this is my second time here. It's all about how to properly support those people, and like what is it that they want to build. And then it all goes from there because whether it's a better financial technology, infrastructure, whether, you know, it's... Um, collaborating more with the developers that are part of B-Trust, um, things like that. And, and then it is those people really that will define and they will identify it so much better. How is it, that, like, what are the technologies, what needs to be built and so on and so forth. And yeah, that this is where my offer is not only to you, Bernard, you and me, we're going to keep building together, but if there are other people in the audience that think that what, you know, I'm building with BTC Pay server with other companies I'm involved with, like I can help, please approach me after this panel and let's figure it out. 
Awesome. Yeah, so. And I would say, by nature, um, Bitcoin is collaborative. Lightning is collaborative. It's the interoperable network of the world. And so, you know, I don't look at us as Bernard said. It's a very small space. I don't think we have any competitors in this space. We're all friends in the space. We're all trying to work together to, you know, all reach the same bright outcome. Um, one thing I would say on collaboration, and this might be unpopular to some, um, but we've got a lot of big players in this space. Um, we've got a lot of big names that are out here, and um, some of them might be Bitcoin and marketing only. And I think that, and I, and I, and I, and I really think that those larger players, um, while they have to listen to their customers and other coins or stable uh, coins might be more popular at the time, they also need to step up and lead. And they need to lead by example and show what technology is available to the world. Um, show the interoperable nature. And I think interoperability scares people because when they open themselves to, up to interoperability, they think, oh, people are going to flee from my application or my network. But what they're losing sight of is how many people will come to them at, in an interoperable network. So I would say that we're in a kind of a catch-22 of integration and, you know, marketing, and um, I think we would, I would push the larger players in our space to do more to spread the message of interoperability and collaboration versus me, me, me. Awesome. A round of applause for all of the comments. So, yeah, so moving on to the last question. Um, what regulatory frameworks are, pro are proving effective in supporting the integration of Bitcoin into traditional payment system in the African countries? Well, when it comes to me, I, um, I love that saying that, uh, you know, governments and politicians will not regulate Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to regulate politicians in a sense that fiscal discipline which is, is the biggest problem when you look at current political system and the ability to print money out of thin air and then redirect it towards smaller groups of insiders. And that's something that Bitcoin will do away with. Um, on the other hand, th there are positive aspects of you know governments and, and um, I don't know, maybe, maybe we should talk about universal money standard <laughs> that, yeah, you did with LightSpark. I, I, I'm, for example, curious to hear that because, again, I, whenever I look at what's happening, I want to see technology, I want to see concrete examples rather than what politicians usually, usually do, and that's just debate. And um, they come up with some kind of framework when that framework gets applied in the practice, like the results end up not being the the desired ones. So, yeah, I, uh, I I would switch a conversation, Bernard, like about universal money standard, and then when is LightSpark supporting open source more? That's but that's a separate topic. Like, like how how did that come up with? Because universal money standard has those hooks for compliance and other stuff. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I think um, the, the, so we, we just spoke about um, collaborative um, strategies and um, I mentioned um, traditional payment companies. Um, the, the reality today is you have a lot of these um, traditional um, you know, payment companies. The, you know, they, they, they're dependent on the government for their licenses. Right, so even if I go pitch, you know, hey, say Bitcoin, Lightning, uh, it can solve this problem for you. And you go, okay, yeah, but um, you know, I, I remember last year or something, we were speaking to a company, a large company, about um, Lightning addresses. We had just implemented Lightning addresses. Oh, this is how it works. This is how it works. And the compliance department were kind of like, ah, oh, but anyone can just send money to anyone's Lightning address. How do you prevent bad actors? Of course, um, we, we didn't have a good answer to, to that. Um, that was good enough for them, because if I have your bank account, I can send money to you from, <laughs> from any other account, right? So it's not much difference, but it's, it's just because oh, when they hear Bitcoin, there's a trigger, right? There's a trigger. Uh, but then what, what UMA does is, you know, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, there's this compliance baked into it. 
that um, if I'm sending money uh, from, say, PayPal, you know, to, say, a bit in, you know, in Nigeria, uh, okay, we can identify both um, users, right? Now, for onboarding those type of big companies, UMA is kind of good for that, right? It's, it's, it's good for that. That's, that's what will bring all of those uh, companies uh, on board. But again, uh, and I think the interesting thing is that UMA, the UMA protocol is also um, open source. So if you've pretty much done anything with um, LN URL lightning address, then um, it's, it's not much different from um, UMA. All, of, all they just did was add a fiat conversion layer to it and that um, compliance layer. But then the interesting thing is you don't have to, um, you know, the compliance part, it's optional. So for example, BitNob, we're not subject to the travel rule, right? We, <laughs> we don't plan to be. Um, we don't think that's really helpful for Bitcoin. But then companies who are subject to the travel rule, for example, uh, you know, this is, this is something that, that works out of the box for them. So if they're sending it to somebody in Nigeria, it's easy to know, okay, um, who, who are you sending this to? And who, who, sent, who sent this money? Uh, so yeah, as, as companies, we, we sort of have this responsibility to um, shareholders as well. It's for profit and everything, but um, uh, as a Bitcoiner, uh, I think the most important thing is to still keep that other side of building um, Bitcoin on the open source layer. I've always been of the opinion that um, the layer one remains the most important thing. Every other layer that we're building on Bitcoin still remains an experiment that has to Proof um, itself. So that's, yeah. that's, that's my thinking around it. Yeah, I, um, I want to say just it's not that all regulation and compliance is bad. It's like there is regulation and compliance is good. But to me, it's the ones that you opt into. The problem right now is that there is so much regulation and compliance that you like even opt, you're opted into by just uh, being you know born <laughs> in a certain place yes. and that's not what i want to see i want to say like okay whatever is the regulation and compliance is something that you opt in and you have a choice yeah. otherwise uh, you know money is not you know store of value medium of exchange it's a system of control yeah. politicians weaponize money in order to control people in certain way and that is not something I'm okay with. And I think a lot of Bitcoiners that are working on revolution that Bitcoin is are doing that because they deeply believe in individual freedom, in human freedom. And we know that once Bitcoin uh, gets to the point where financial system is built on it, it, it will be a much better world because there won't be, again, individuals that control others through money yeah. using it as a system of control. Yeah, um, sorry, just to, um, so an interesting thing about, um, you know, regulations as well is, um, you know, in the traditional sense, um, if, if, if say a bit now in Nigeria, we're trying to do say um, an integration, right? Um, with a US company, right, on traditional rails. Yeah, we want to move money to the US or US and back. Um, <laughs> You know, all of the compliance that you have to follow, it's, it's a U.S. compliance, right? Um, and there's this guy in New York, right, who probably still thinks that, like, yeah, you're coding Bitcoin in a hut, right, somewhere in the bush, right? And, you know, this guy is giving you this ridiculous compliance, right? Like, it's, it's pretty easy to pick someone who has had their money locked <laughs> on PayPal, right? Just, <laughs> just because of their region, right? Um, it's pretty easy to see someone who has moved somewhere and you know, they just open an account and you know, this and that and you shut down the account, right? Um, but then with, uh, with Bitcoin, what we've seen, and um, I, I can talk about this because it's, it's, it's our reality, we, we don't have to, you know, now comply, you know, with, say, oh, the U.S., right? We can comply with what works locally for us because at the end of the day, the only thing we're exchanging with the other party, right, 
is Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin. So they give us Bitcoin. We off ramp it um, to the person's account, right? Um, we don't have to keep any money with a company in the US if we want to send money to the US. And just think about it. You're a US company and, you know, there's this whole stereotype and I'm better than I'm in Nigeria. You've never met me. We just spoke online. And I'm like, hey, yeah, we can do, we can do payments for you. We can, we can pay into bank accounts in Nigeria for you, or we can do mobile money payments in Ghana. And I'm like, yeah, but you have to top up your floats. Uh, why don't you put like a million dollars to top up your floats and everything? I'm like, uh, what if these guys just you know, shut down and I, I can get my money? Um, but what we have in reality today is um, we have you know, companies like Strike, you know, like Coin Corner, and every, all they just need to do is plug into our APIs. They don't need to keep a dime with us. They're sending the money. So it's like pay as you go, right? So we're literally streaming um, the payments now. There's no counterparty risks. If we wake up and decide that, oh, BitNob is no longer going to exist, then the, 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 we don't have to say, okay, how do we settle with you? We don't have to meet every single day to do any kind of settlement and all of those. And so that's, that's, that's what it opens, right? That's what it opens. And when you look at um, the global south, it's, it's just easy, right? We could just, in a couple of days, we could just say, okay, we want to send money to Brazil, right? We just get a partner in Brazil who can accept payments over Lightning, and we can do it. It's one dollar, right? It's one dollar, right? Before, before Lightning, there wasn't a way to send a dollar from, say, Nigeria to Australia, right? But, but today, we, we, can, we, can, we can send a dollar to, from Nigeria to Australia, so it's like a local payment. And when someone travels from the U.S., comes here, Right? Oh, you're using the Strike app from the US. For example, you come to Ghana, you could, you could just pay mobile money merchants today. Those were things that were not possible, right? I don't want to use my card in this other country. I can do all of these things. So those are the things that these opens, and those things exist today. So I think it's just a game of patience. Network effect, it's, it's, it's going to build. On the regulation side, Bernard hit the nail on the head that the U.S. is a bear to deal with, and, uh, and I think we all know that. But on the Africa side, I think it's important to not just paint regulation as the entire continent, but um, I was talking with Eric from Gridless yesterday, and, well, which countries are we talking about? You know, Rwanda, if you transact in Bitcoin, it's finable, it's a, it's a, it's a you can get in trouble, uh, big trouble for it. Nigeria, the CBN has said, you know, no uh, legal tender allowed, but Nigerians have just ignored that rule. So who, uh, you know, where are we going to do this? And then in Kenya, you see people that are leaving or companies that we work with leaving there to go set up in Mauritius or Zanzibar to escape these kind of regulatory um, controls. But in, when I first started studying this ecosystem, um, and, I, and I really believe that, I think it was FA yesterday who said, like, Bitcoin needs Africa. He is correct because the best use case in the world for what we are doing is this continent. If you look at the numbers, you have 54 countries, you have 44 currencies, you have 200 plus banks, you have 500 plus mobile wallet money applications out there. If Africa decided tomorrow that we were, they were going to collaborate together, they could kind of, you know, do a little moonshot together and then at that point, Regulation AML KYC, you can kind of stick it to the West if you choose to work together. And, you know, Emily said yesterday from TBX, why is it that, uh, you know, someone from Nigeria has to send their money through Babylon, I mean London, um, to get back to Kenya, Ghana or Kenya? And that uh, is, you know, that couldn't be uh, a stronger statement. It's, it's ridiculous. And one of the um, companies we work with, one of their their slogans is roaming currencies. And they said, why shouldn't our currencies in Africa roam as freely as our wildlife? And it's ridiculous that to do anything in this world currently, whether you're in the global south in LATAM or the global south in Africa, it's all got to go through New York and London. So on the regulatory front, um, we got a long way to go, but I think inter-collaboration within your continent and, you know, working together more here can really show the world what is possible. And then maybe one day you don't have to listen to those regulations as much. Awesome, awesome. So um, just quickly, we are coming to the end of this um, panel session. And I'd like um, each one of you to just, uh, you know, your final comments, general comments that we can just use to wrap up this um, session. So we can start with you. Other than uh, yeah, turn on my mic. 
um, is just keep building. Just keep building, um, um, keep collaborating with other Bitcoiners. One of the biggest thing in Bitcoin is, is not only the network uh, of you know computers and money that Bitcoin is, but Bitcoin is also a social network. There is a social layer to Bitcoin. Uh, events like this are amazing because we can come together, have three days where we can interact, talk, um, plan with each other, and collaborate together. So, um, you know, look at Bitcoin absolutely as a, you know, network for money, but look at it as also a network of people and uh, keep working, keep supporting each other. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's in the same vein. Um, I would just add that um, we, we have to approach it uh, with a learning mindset. Uh, that even even if we think we know Bitcoin really well, um, there's still a lot of questions that need answers, and we probably even haven't you know found the ultimate solution just yet. So we have to keep learning, keep listening, and approach it with um, humility. Yeah. I would say the same. Keep building, building, building. Keep the spirits high. Um, the stronger we get, the harder it's going to be. Um, and another elephant in the room is, you know, we're competing with people throwing money at projects. Um, you get cello grants get flying off the shelves in Africa. How do you compete with that if, you know, Bitcoin isn't throwing those grants out? And that's where I would kind of push back to those larger companies in the space, the largest players in the space, and, you know, say we need similar um, building or, uh, I guess, support for the Bitcoin community in um, regions like this in the global south. Beautiful. This has been um, an amazing and an insightful panel session. Uh, please give a round of applause to our amazing panelists as they go on to take their seats. Thank you.